Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. We're getting towards the end of Natsu 2023, so let's get the one Sanyaku guy we haven't covered in here, Taka Keisho. We'll study his fights against Hoshoryu, who he should face on either day 13 or 14. Keisho holds a 7-2 advantage in the series, including four of the six we'll look at today. Even though he does well in this matchup, he's looked a little shaky in the last few days, and we know he hurt his knee in March, so does Hoshoryu have a good route to victory? We'll look at fights from six consecutive Bashos, starting in March 2022, running through January 2023. Here's the first. <laughs> Hoshoryu comes off the line with his hands high. Takakesho has his right hand a little higher, but really he's leading with his head. If you're an American football fan, you might recognize this as leading with the crown of the helmet, a type of tackle that was outlawed some years ago because it was too dangerous for both guys. But Keisho do what Keisho do. Hoshoryu has his right hand under Keisho's left arm and his own left arm over top. If you look at his profile on NHK's website, he's listed as a Migi Yotsu fighter, which means he prefers to get his right hand under the opponent's left and onto the belt. Clearly, this is what he's going for. Takakesho's face says no as it tries to cave in Hoshoryu's ribs. We don't have access to an angle that shows Takakesho's right hand from the start, but it's under Hoshoryu's left, and even though Hoshoryu clamps it, it's the point of contact where all that momentum Keisho focused is created. Hoshoryu switches stances in response. Hoshoryu is driven all the way to the rope. This is what Takakesho built his career on doing, so it's time to finish the fight. But look at Hoshoryu's right knee. Takakesho's push has involved his left foot being forward. Not forward by much, but forward. So when Hoshoryu finds the rope and braces, he sets his knee to catch Keisho's leg when he inevitably keeps pressing. He doesn't even get amazing knee-to-leg contact, but it's enough to tip Keisho to the side. This is the point where Sumo, especially at high levels, stops being predictable. Hoshoryu got his counter throw, which is his best shot at victory, but there's no guarantee it'll lead to a win. He heaves with all his might, but if Takakesho is able to save his balance even a little, he'll just fall on Hoshoryu and still take the dub but the left leg generates too much torque, they both go airborne, and one mono e later, Hoshoryu has his win. Takakesho got exactly the start he wanted, we just saw what a guy who's good at throws can do on the rope. Wakamoto Haru might be the best current example, with some of those wild victories he pulls out when all looks lost. Second fight. <laughs> Takakesho's hands are slightly more forward than in the first one, but the bigger difference is Hoshoryu's head height. He still has his hands up, but he's coming in at a noticeably lower angle. Even though he got his first win in the head-to-head -head last time, it was an escape from a bad position, and he doesn't want to give Keisho carte blanche to spear him again. It would get repetitive to say ow every time heads crack, but when it's Takakesho, ow. But as much as it must suck, getting hit in the head means not getting hit in the chest, so mission accomplished on that front. When they push off each other, we can tell they had an over-under balance on the initial push. Each had their right hand pushing high, while each left hand was planted lower. Takakesha was a little more stable, evidenced by his ability to keep his left hand on Hoshoryu's chest, but Hoshoryu quickly swats it away. Takakesha looks to charge in, but this is where his height can be an issue. Because he can't outreach most guys, many times he'll look to barrel in with his whole body, but this gives opponents a chance to make a defensive move like Hoshoryu does here, getting his hands up to Keisho's shoulders and neck to blunt the push. There is a mutual push-off. Again, Hoshoryu is able to get his longer arm positioned on Keisho's chest. Takakesho's right arm rises to parry, but Hoshoryu knows it's coming, so he already has his right hand targeting the midsection, bracing his left forearm against Keisho's face. Oshi isn't Hoshoryu's game, but he's at least protecting himself well and forcing Keisho to find answers. Hoshoryu smartly pulls his left arm back. If he holds it there, it's just a target. Once more, they push off, and Keisho keeps a hand in place, this time the right, but Hoshoryu immediately parries it away, and they reset again. Takakesho hasn't been Ozeki this long by mindlessly attacking, though. He comes forward, but this time swipes his hands at Hoshoryu's rather than diving in at the chest. Hoshoryu barrels through, getting his hands up on Takakesho and jamming his elbows into Keisho's shoulders, but now Keisho has his hands on Hoshoryu's midsection. It might be hard to move Hoshoryu backwards from that position, but not for Takakesho to shove him back and create another reset. Hoshoryu goes high again, and now Keisho lands a solid double parry to bat his arms down. They crash into each other with forward momentum. 
Takakesho knows full well that Hoshoryu wants the right hand belt grip and thus keeps his arm under Hoshoryu's to prevent any attempt at the grab. They push off yet again, though Keisho definitely gets the better of this one, sliding Hoshoryu back a few inches and not giving his left arm a chance to really do anything. Hoshoryu goes for the right handed slap, but by the time it actually lands, Takakesho has already turned with it and used that rotation to whip his left arm around into Hoshoryu's shoulder. It looks like he simply powers Hoshoryu out of position with his left hand, and of course there's a lot of pure strength at work, but rolling with the slap also reduced the contact and helped to send Hoshoryu off course. If you've ever trained in boxing, Muay Thai, or certain other martial arts, you might remember how you have to learn to maintain good balance if you miss with a hook when you're throwing for power. That's what happened to Hoshoryu here. Keisho brings the right hand around and down on the back of Hoshoryu's head, and there's nothing for Hoshoryu to do to stop himself from springing out of the ring. This fight shows how Hoshoryu can make Takakesho's life difficult, but why it also makes things tough for him. He can play the Oshi game well enough to keep Takakesho at bay, but it doesn't give him a route inside for the belt grab he wants, and he can't afford any mistakes. Third fight. <laughs> They're positioned a little differently this time. Takakesho has his fists down a few inches behind the line, while Hoshoryu is set slightly further up. Hoshoryu brings his head up more, like in the first match, but he's also in a more aggressive stance. Look at his feet. He basically jumps in on the tachiai rather than step one foot forward. From the close-up, we get a better idea what he's trying to do with this approach. He punches his right arm down inside Keisho's left before Keisho can react to it. Going for the belt is a normal approach for him, but with the leap in, he's going all out for that belt on this one. He even has his head turned to the left, which should give him a bit more reach with his right hand. This, unfortunately, doesn't work at all. Takakesho gets his hands up and flat out drills Hoshoryu backwards, crushing any hopes of landing that belt grab immediately. He holds his hand against Hoshoryu's face, creating what is an uncomfortable position to say the least. Even though, as we've said before, leaving your arm out there makes it a target, it sticks for a relatively long time before Hoshoryu is able to parry it away. Hoshoryu returns to what appears to be his go-to defense, getting his hands face high and bracing the elbows, but again, it's no big deal for Keisho to push him away. Here, in a still frame, it looks like Hoshoryu is in a pretty good defensive position. He's parrying the right arm and coming up on the left from underneath. However, we have to bear in mind how quickly this is all happening. Keisho gets just enough of a push that Hoshoryu is slightly too far away to make a solid parry. Just like with the off-balance slap from the last fight, he's balanced here with the assumption of good contact, so when he misses, he lurches forward and has to adjust. Takakesho, of course, sees an opportunity. Once again, Hoshoryu gets his head inside and is immediately pushed away. He gets to Takakesho's side. We can't see it yet, but he finally landed the right-hand belt grip. His momentum, however, is not going in the same direction as Takakesho's, so when all of Takakesho takes to the air and jumps away, Hoshoryu gets yanked off balance. Keisho has his arm around the back of Hoshoryu's, and from his right hand position, we can reasonably assume he had some kind of pull on Hoshoryu's left arm. Hoshoryu finally got the belt, but Takakesho had an answer ready immediately, so it did him no good. Fourth fight. We're up to September 2022 now. Takakesho barrels forward once again. Hoshoryu returns to his tachiai from the first fight. His right forearm is up, and his left hand is on Takakesho's face. He's essentially faking a forearm shiver, even pushing Takakesho's face into it to a degree. But he does reach down for the belt at the last moment. Boom! They're locked up this time. Hoshoryu has both hands around Takakesho's back, and is basically holding on to his body fat. His left hand is on Keisho's ribs. Keisho's right arm looks somewhat trapped, but the forearm brace against Hoshoryu's biceps prevents the belt grab, or it at least makes it more difficult. On the other side, Takakesho wants to push but can't get his hand inside, so ends up clamping for control, even though we've seen this isn't his preferred strategy. Keisho pulls backwards, pushing off with his right forearm. This sucks, and he wants out. Hoshoryu, though, gets his left forearm under Takakesho's elbow, doubling up on the tools he has to keep his opponent in place. Keisho heaves backwards so hard that Hoshoryu comes off his feet, and having locked both of his gigantic arms around Hoshoryu's right, pivots hard to detach Hoshoryu's left side grip. It looks like a violent arm throw is incoming. But now it's Takakesho playing Hoshoryu's game, 
and while he's in a good position, he doesn't pivot his right foot back to get it out of the way and open the space for Hoshoryu to fall into. Hoshoryu also plants his left foot here to change his momentum and send it Takakesho's way. And for his final trick, Hoshoryu gets his left hand behind Keisho's leg. Keisho was already falling when the hand got there, but it makes the fall quicker and reduces any chance of Hoshoryu somehow being the one to land first. Just like in the first fight, Takakesho had a winning position, but instead of Hoshoryu creating a last second opening in order to escape, this time Hoshoryu forced him into a style outside his expertise, which led to him giving Hoshoryu that last ditch shot at victory. Fifth fight. All right, this one's pretty similar to the second fight, so I'm going a little less into detail. It's worth pointing out, though, that Takakesho keeps getting further back off the line, and Hoshoryu is definitely further forward than he was in the first fight. Watch this, though. Takakesho takes position, Hoshoryu takes position, and when Takakesho crouches, then Hoshoryu does. It looks like Hoshoryu is the one trying to fix the starting distance between them. Anyway, it's a pretty similar Tachiai, and we have another immediate push-off. Hoshoryu dives back in, followed by another push-off. This is a change. We've seen that Hoshoryu likes to lead with his right shoulder when he charges in with the body, so Takakesho reads it, steps left, and gets a great angle leading into a push-down attempt. He's too far away to get much force on it, though, so Hoshoryu slips it easily and comes back with a hard push. Then Hoshoryu commits the sin of leaving his left arm out there to maintain a hold and gets it parried away. We have another Hoshoryu face grab followed by a Keisho push, another Hoshoryu right shoulder charge and a Keisho push, and now Hoshoryu changes it up by jumping left with a swim move when Takakesho comes in again. These strikes and responses are basically reflexive, so he's setting up Takakesho to do the same thing as always and tries to take advantage using his mobility. However, part of this involved parrying Keisho's right arm, and as we can see, that arm is already pulled back. Keisho follows Hoshoryu and drills him back to the rope, but Hoshoryu parries the pushing right and clamps the left hand just enough to give himself an escape route, even if that just leads to a slide into the rope elsewhere. He's in a pretty deep lunge, and Keisho catches up with a push just before Hoshoryu can get his right foot on the rope or his right hand on the belt. Either one might have given him a chance to defend, but instead, he's out. Last fight from this past January. Obviously, I don't know Hoshoryu or his plans, but sometimes this is a sign of somebody who is just trying shit to see what works. He's back to lowering his head and getting his hands up to the shoulders on the Tachiai. It makes sense that if nothing is really doing the trick, at least give your opponent different looks, but it's definitely indicative of the fact that Hoshoryu doesn't have any answers yet, at least on the Tachiai. We have another push to start. This time, though, Hoshoryu's hand sticks. Takakesho's left is already positioned to parry, but hey, maybe it's something. Nope, it's not. Takakesho looks like he barely has to touch Hoshoryu to send him off balance. As usual, Hoshoryu responds with his shoulder charge position. Takakesho takes the same step as last time, attempting another pushdown, and this time it works exactly as planned. The biggest problem for Hoshoryu here is that even though he saw Takakesho do this last time and might have been well aware it could happen again, a wrestler who's off balance doesn't have a lot of options, so ingrained reflex often takes over. When that happens, it doesn't necessarily matter if he knows what could happen, he'll end up walking into it anyway. On the whole, even though Hoshoryu has pulled out a couple of wins, this matchup significantly favors Takakesho. Some of his losses of this Basho raise the question of whether he has the same ability to drive forward as usual, which could make Hoshoryu more able to match up with him in an Oshi fight, but more able is not the same as equal. It just increases the chance he can find an opening and make something happen, but it doesn't make this a 50-50 matchup. Until Hoshoryu, and frankly Tatsunami's entire coaching staff, show some idea of how to approach this matchup successfully, it doesn't look like Hoshoryu is going to win much until Takakesho starts breaking down and allows Hoshoryu to better match him physically. That's it for day 13. Like it if you learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow.